Hi boys and girls, welcome to this Sunday service on 24th of January. Let's pray. Thank you dear God for helping us have another beautiful Sunday. Thank you for helping us have a good, another twen- yet another year. And please help us understand what the teacher teaches us. In Jesus name I pray. Now let's welcome the praise and worship team. When I read the Bible, it is God's special word. When I read the Bible, and this is what I've heard. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. When I read the Bible, it tells me how to live. When I read the Bible, it tells me He forgives. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. When I read the Bible, it shows me how to love. When I read the Bible, it makes me think of Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me so. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us today to wake up and see a new day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your goodness towards us, O God. Lord, we want to commit our families into your hands, O God. We pray the Lord, you will guide us, you will lead us, you will help us to love one another and live in unity. Father, we want to also pray for the church. We pray that, Lord, 
as a body of Christ, that we will love one another, that we shall be the salt and the light of the earth wherever we are, O God. And Lord, we want to also pray for uh, the, the opportunity you've given us, Lord, to be back in school, O God. We pray that you protect us, that you'll guide us, you'll be with us, O God. As we continue with our studies, may you bless our teachers as well, O God. And Lord, we want to pray for our country. We pray that, Lord, you will guide us. We pray that you'll give our leaders wisdom to lead this nation in accordance to your will, O God, that your perfect will concerning our country shall be done. And even as we go into the lesson for today, we pray that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will help us to understand everything that we are taught. May we become more and more like you, Jesus. We give you glory and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? How is the new year? Happy, happy new year to you. Welcome to today's lesson. As we begin, let's appreciate Pastor Charity who prayed for us and also the team that led us in worshiping God in song. Help me appreciate them. Thank you so much and may God bless you. My name is Teacher Carol and I'm so excited to be with you. I'm looking forward to our lesson today and to teaching you even as the year begins. Now, our theme for this year is destined for the next level. Our theme tells us that God wants to do a new thing in our lives. And he also wants us to grow in our relationship with him. Last Sunday, teacher Wilson taught us another way that our relationship with God can grow. Now, can you tell whoever is watching with you or listening in with you what our lesson was? Yes, our lesson was Destined for the next level by praying continuously. Praying continuously. Did you learn the memory verse even as you did your craft? I'm sure you did. Now, some of you, in fact, many of you, sent us some excellent work. Your work was just so awesome. I'd like us to take a look and see what you sent in and look in for your work. Let's have a look.
Wow, did you see all that great work? Keep it up, boys and girls. That was so, so awesome. And now let's get ready with our Bible, our notebooks, and our pens so that we can begin our lesson today. I'd like us to have a look at the pictures on the screen and tell me what you see. What are the children in these different pictures doing? Uh-huh. Some are playing musical instruments. Some are singing. And there are those that are playing on the beach in the sand. Now, can you tell me which of these children could be worshipping God? You think it's the one? It's those ones who are praying? What about the one that is playing in the sand on the beach? Hmm. You think about that. And we'll find out at the end of the lesson. Our lesson today is living a life of worship. Destined for the next level by living a life of worship. Boys and girls. God created us to worship him and to know him. He created us to know him and to worship him. Now, what does it mean to worship God? It means to praise him, to thank him for all that he is and everything that he does. Worshiping God also means that we adore him and we Give him the honor and the respect that is due to him. Now, there are various ways or many ways that we can worship God. Do you know some of them? By singing praises to him? Yes. By reading our Bibles? Yes. By praying, which is talking to God. Also serving others and serving God at church. And another way is by obeying everything that he tells us to do and living in obedience. Now, God wants us to worship him the right way. And how do we know how to worship God the right way? The Bible tells us and the Bible shows us how to worship God. Remember, only God is to be worshipped. We are not to worship any other thing, not idols or other people, not even angels, because that is a sin against God. Now, in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, Jesus taught us that God is spirit. We cannot see him with our physical eyes. And those who worship God the right way, worship him in spirit, they must worship God in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? It means that they are born again and they have the Holy Spirit in them. And so the Holy Spirit helps them and shows them how to worship God the right way. Now, boys and girls, for us to be able to go to the next level and for our relationship with God to grow, we must choose to worship God in everything that we do, wherever we are, and at all times. The Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1, says that we are to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. For this is our spiritual act of worship. That means in everything that we do, we are to honor God. We are to think about him, we are to obey him and do according to his word, according to his will. And when we do this, boys and girls, then we are living a life of worship and our whole lives is an act of worship towards God. 
Now, we are going to hear and read from Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 29. And this is our Bible story for today. In our story, we'll read about two men who had learned to worship God at all times. So let us read together. I know you have your Bible open. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for light. He rushed in and he fell trembling, trembling before Paul and Silas. Now, boys and girls, let us watch this clip, this video clip, and listen attentively to our Bible story. Paul and Silas traveled the world telling people about Jesus. Some people were very happy to hear about Jesus. But others were very angry because they wanted to keep doing evil things. They ordered Paul and Silas to be arrested, beaten and thrown in jail. The jailer locked Paul and Silas in jail and put their feet in stocks. The jail was not a nice place, but Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. They remembered that God is always good and worthy of praise. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. Paul and Silas' chains fell off and the prison doors opened. They were free. God had rescued them. The jailer woke up in a panic. If the prisoners escaped, he would be in big trouble. Paul and Silas shouted to the jailer, we didn't run away. Paul and Silas told him all about Jesus. The jailer believed in Jesus. He took Paul and Silas to his house to tell his family about Jesus. The jailer and all his household were baptized. Boys and girls, did you see? Did you hear and follow the clip? Good! Now Paul and Silas were in prison. They were in prison for teaching and preaching the good news about Jesus. There were some people who did not want to hear about Jesus. And so they had Paul and Silas thrown into jail, into the prison. Now Paul and Silas were beaten and beaten, their backs were bleeding, and their feet were clamped and put into wooden frames. They were in so much pain and their hands were put in chains. Did you see that? Yes. Now, did Paul and Silas cry and grumble and complain while they were in jail? No, not at all. In fact, they did something very unique. We read and we saw from the clip that they sang, they prayed and sang praises to God. They worshipped God, even in the situation they were in, in the prison. Now, why do you think Paul and Silas worshipped God even when they were in that prison? Good! It's because they remembered that God is good and he's always, always worthy of worship, no matter what we are going through. Paul and Silas knew that God was with them, even there in the prison. And they worshipped God in spirit and in truth. What happened after Paul or as Paul and Silas were singing praises to God? What happened? Yes, there was such a violent earthquake 
It shook the whole prison. The doors flew open and their chains, they fell off. And Paul and Silas were freed. They were free. But did you notice something? Even though they were free, Paul and Silas did not escape. They did not leave the jail. Paul and Silas just wanted to worship God. Isn't that amazing? It is. And so when the jailer, the one who was guarding Paul and Silas and the other prisoners, when he woke up and he saw the doors wide open, he thought, oh my goodness, the prisoners must have escaped. And he was so afraid because he thought, he, he knew he would get into trouble. So he thought he would kill himself and save himself from getting into trouble. But before he could do that, Paul stopped him and told him, don't do it, we are all here. Now, this jailer had heard Paul and Silas singing praises to God in the jail. And now Paul and Silas had just saved his life by not escaping. Now he knew that God, it must have been God who was helping them to act the way they acted. And so he asked them an important question. He asked Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas told him that he should believe in the name of Jesus and he and all his household would be saved. And we too can believe on the same name of Jesus. Now, boys and girls, what do we learn from our Bible story today? We learn three things. Number one, that the right way to worship God is in spirit and in truth. And this means that we worship God by the help of the Holy Spirit, the help of the Holy Spirit and by his power. And that way we know the truth about God and we are able to worship God in the way that he deserves, in the way that he should be worshipped. Number two, we learn that we must worship God at all times. And this means in everything we do, wherever we are, and no matter what our circumstances or our situations, whether we are feeling sad or happy, we can worship God. Now, Paul and Silas, they worshipped God, even if they were, they were in jail and they were in pain, but they chose to worship God. Now remember, boys and girls, God created us so that we can know him and that we, and we can worship him. And so we can use every part of us to worship God. Did you know that? Yes, we can. We can use our minds to think about God and all the things that he does. We can use our mouth to tell God how much we love him and to sing praises to him. We can use our eyes to notice everything that God has created and to tell him thank you for it. What about our ears? We can use our ears to listen to the sounds of everything God has made and even to other people singing praises to God. Now, how do we use our hands to worship God? We can use them to play musical instruments. We can use them to draw some of the things God has made, even as we thank him for all of that. And we can use our feet, boys and girls, to take us to places where we can worship God, like Sunday school or Anywhere, even a, a nice garden somewhere, alone where we can be alone with God, we can use our feet for that. What about our hearts? Yes, we can use our hearts to love God, to love him for all that he is and all that he does for us. And in everything we do, it is possible to worship God. If we are playing with our friends or if we are in school doing our homework, helping our parents at home with our chores, even then we can worship 
God. How? By thinking about him. And as we think about him, we thank him for the things that we are doing. We can thank him for our friends. We can thank him for the, the fun that we have with our friends. And we can keep telling him that he is worthy of all our praise. Boys and girls, when we love and honor God in everything we do and obey his word, doing according to his word, what he tells us to do, that is also a form of worshiping God. And this pleases God. The last thing that we learn, boys and girls, is that as we worship God, we get his peace and his joy in our hearts. Remember Paul and Silas, as they worshipped, the chains fell off and they were freed. We too can have the peace and joy of God as we worship him. So we have learned, boys and girls, that to worship God is to praise him and to thank him and to tell him and express our love to him. We've also learned that there's a right way to worship God and that is in spirit and in truth. Now, boys and girls, do you remember the pictures that we saw at the beginning of our lesson? Now, can we say that all those children are worshiping God? It is possible to say that they are if they love and honor God because we can worship God in everything that we do. Even if we are playing with our friends, even if we are studying at school, as long as we love and honor God and obey his word, that can be a form of worship to God. Now, when we receive Jesus in our hearts, he gives us the Holy Spirit to help us. Now, if you would like to receive Jesus in your heart, please say this prayer after me. Let's say this prayer together. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to take away all my sins. Dear God, please forgive me. Make me your child and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, if you have said that prayer, you have Jesus in your heart and you have the power of the Holy Spirit to help you come before our holy God and to worship him always. And that is such a great thing. It's such a wonderful, wonderful thing. Okay? Now, it's time for us to learn our memory verse. And our memory verse is from the Bible, from the book of Psalm chapter 34, verse 1. And the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let's say that again. Psalm chapter 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And one final time. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Excellent. Boys and girls, we can praise and worship God at all times. In everything that we do, wherever we are, we can praise and worship God. So let's learn our memory verse. And now it's time for our craft. You'll need some paper, a marker, pencil, and colored pencils or crayons or even paint. And this is what you're going to do. Use your pencil to trace the shape of a mouth. 
Okay? So use your pencil, trace the shape of a mouth, and then use your marker to darken the edges. And when that is ready, write the memory verse on the lips. Now I had done mine, and this is how it looks like. It's a big, wide mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 34, verse 1. Awesome. Boys and girls, thank you for listening to the lesson today. I want to wish you a very, very happy week, a blessed week. Enjoy school. I know some of us, most of us have gone back to school. Enjoy your time in school. And remember, you can worship God at any time, anywhere, and in whatever you're doing. So until next time, bye!